What's up folks, welcome back to another video. Remember this is an entire series where we walk you how we can build an entire Merun application. If this is your first time on this channel, this is where we help you become a full stack developer. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll be right with you after the pause. In this video, we're going to walk you through how we can take this application that is running locally on our computer and how we can get it to Heroku. And then in the next video, we're going to walk you through how we can connect a MongoDB Atlas into Heroku. So without any further ado, let's get our hand dirty. Well, if you haven't watched this entire series, you definitely need to. We definitely cover a lot within that series. Without any further ado, let's get our hands dirty. So first thing first, before you start, you need to make sure that you do have the Heroku CLI install. If you don't have that into your computer, you can feel free to kind of head over that you all and kind of download it for your operating system, either Mac OS, Windows or Ubuntu. Now, if case that you don't know if you have it or not, you can do the following command like Heroku dash dash version and that will tell you either or not you have the Heroku CLI installed. Once you have it, the next thing you need to do is make sure that you log in. Do this command Heroku login in order for you to log in with the correct email that will prompt you to log login with whichever email that you're using but once that's set up you should be good to go all right assuming you have everything ready to go with the heroku cli then we're going to go back into the application we're going to walk you guys through a couple of things that you need to do in, in order for you to get this application to heroku okay so the first thing that i need to do is wherever you have the port make sure that you are using this port now you might be wondering why do we need to use this process that env that port well the reason being is because if we are putting port 80 av there are so many application running on heroku they all likely a chance that for that port to not be available and remember this is how your application is running this is how your port is running which means that heroku might not have that port available your application might never run because that port is already busy serving another application now when you say process that port this is saying all right mr heroku i understand that port 8080 might be busy but whatever port that you have then please run my application into it and what that means is let's assume that heroku has this port available then heroku will run this port of uh, this will run your application on that port the reason we have this is just for fallback which is more for local development and this is more for us for us working into our machine we say all right we're going to try to use this one which of course does not exist then we fall back to the local development so deploying an application to roku you need to have this second thing is our database connection now if you're using mongol at last week, we're going to walk you through in the next video. But for Rook One, we're going to use an add on. And the way you access that add on is we like this we do process.env mongodb underscore uri and what we're saying is we're technically saying the same thing as the port we said all right mr heroku if we're using your ads on uh and that ads on is available on that environment variable then please whatever value is inside that variable then use that for us now we're going to walk you through and show you where this variable is coming from inside heroku but all this is doing is hey let's try to use heroku first then if that doesn't exist then let's fall back to our local for development so technically to check for now step one and step two and step number three what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom variable inside heroku because we need a way to know that hey is our application is on heroku we're going to set the value of node underscore env to a value called production now this is a way that we're going to know that our application is on heroku this is how we're going to tell hey this application we set a custom variable again this is something that we going to set together we're going to walk you through if this value is is production which means it's on heroku then we're going to run the following code and the following code we're going to run is we, we're going to try to put the client which is the react application into our server in order for us to do that check this out when i navigate inside the client folder so i go inside the client folder once i am inside of folder i'm going to run a command call npm run build which can give us a production build that we can serve onto our server now check this out this build folder is available 
for us right here inside of it there's a couple of things there's the index html there's the static folder there's so many things inside that build folder now all we want to run is we want to get that build folder and put it into our server to do that all we need to do is have that use express that static and then we give it the path of where this folder is located it's located inside a client i go inside a client and then slash build and believe it or not ladies and gentlemen we are done with step number three now if you remember for step number three we had to go inside the client folder and then run the build folder somehow we're gonna need to write some custom script for this so that by the time our application goes to heroku this script automatically runs runs post build which means after the build process finish then it needs to run that in order for Heroku to serve our application again that might look crazy that might not make sense but what I'm referring to is this for step number four we're gonna go inside the packet.json that is inside the root folder and we're gonna write a couple script here first script we're gonna write is something called build and we're gonna go inside that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside this client folder and once we are inside of it we're gonna run npm run build so that's what we are looking for to do inside that the second script we're going to write it's something called install client now this is again me coming up with the name for this you can name it anything but what i want to happen in this is whenever you go inside the client i want to do an npm install first before you run the build because what's going to happen is if you try to run the build without doing an npm install it won't find the command in order for it to even run the script so technically you need to run this first in order for you to to run the build now how can we tell heroku that hey when we finish deploying our build process to heroku we automatically want you to do this well in order for us to do that there's a command that heroku give us it's called Heroku post bill again this is not something that I come up with I did not come up with this name it has to be written exactly the way that it is however I did come up with this name which means you can change this one whatever you want to but the goal behind this is this need to happen first and then this happened so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go here and first run this which is we're gonna run this command to do that we're gonna do npm run run install dash client and then we're gonna do npm run build and believe it or not and ladies and gentlemen we are all set in terms of where we need to touch inside the code now one quick things to check just in case make sure that your start command is important what's gonna happen is a is gonna try to run a file called proc file if it does not exist then Heroku is gonna try to run this command in order for them to run your application so it is crucial that this exists with at least running your node server for Heroku to run your application all right so once this is out of the way the last thing that you need to check before you deploy your application to Heroku is sometime whenever you use the create react app it does create what they call a git folder for you so you need to go inside the client folder if you see anything like master make sure that you run this command and that's all this going to do is this going to remove the git folder for you the reason we're doing this whenever you have git inside a git it might run into a lot of complication that you don't want to get yourself into now again this might sound crazy but what we really want to do is instead of having git inside the client folder we're going to go here and initialize git in the root of your merge stack application so in the root we're going to go here and initialize git and now if i do git status i can see everything that is being tried now i do not want to send the node module so i'm going to add those one into a file called git ignore i'm going to create a file called dot git ignore which is this file i'm going to go inside of it and add this uh, node module in here so technically i don't want git to track my node module now if i do git status again if i run this command again git status you can see now it's not tracking the node module before it was tracking the node module but now it's no longer tracking that node module all right so once this is out of the way now you need to make sure that you have git running inside the root 
folder, okay? This is where you should be having Git. So once this is out of the way, I'm gonna go here and create this app. I'm gonna call Heroku Create, and I'm gonna call this one Mern, Mern Stack YouTube Demo. Something very basic, Mern Stack YouTube Demo, and click Enter. Cool, my application now is created. Now, if you remember, inside my server JS, I was using this, which is going to be an ads on on Heroku. Now check this out. If I do Heroku adds on dash dash all, I got a lot of application on Heroku. However, the application that I created doesn't have an ads on. So before I deploy my application to Heroku, or maybe after you deploy your application to Heroku, you need to make sure that it has an ads on connected to that MongoDB. Again, the whole reason we're doing this is because we're going to be using the MongoDB through Heroku. Okay. That's the only reason we're doing this. So how can we create one? So to create one, I can just run this command Heroku adds on column create. Remember, this is a column create space. And these are just the different ads on that. I already have one. The one I'm using is going to be this one, which is going to be a free version. And I just put the name of it right here, which is Mongo lab column sandbox and click enter. Now that should create my ads on to verify again. I'm going to go ahead and run Heroku ads on all, which means now I should be seeing my application as part of it. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my application being part of that ads on. So which means I should should be good to go. And all I need to do now is I'm going to go here and add everything we get and then commit that as a message. And all I need to do now in order to get my application to Roku is git push Heroku master. Now, before you do this, this is just for your check. One thing that you could do, which will make it easier. You can run this command Heroku local. And what's this going to do for you is this going to run your application locally as if it was on Heroku. And one of the reasons that I highly recommend you do this, just in case that there is an issue, you can code that before you kind of go with the whole process of oh my gosh, my application not warning. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's not working. Then you can kind of have an idea and debug the application before it goes to Heroku. Now check this out. The way Heroku run this application is it first look for this file called profile. If it doesn't find this file, then you run this command for you. And now you can see everything started and you can test your application on port 5000. The reason this is not 8080 is because Heroku is the one running your application now locally for you. So if I go now to port 5000, you can see here all I'm getting all the data because it's connected to my local DB. And if I add another one in order to test, making sure that work fine. And I can see this one being added, which means pushing this application to Heroku should not have any issue. So let's take a look and do it. So to push this application after everything we've done is git push Heroku master and ladies and gentlemen, finger cross. So everything seems to have gone successfully. All we need to do to test this is type the command Heroku open and that should open the app for you into your browser. If everything went right, we should see this. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we are now seeing our application. If we go here and kind of add a new value, for example, I can go here with first post, something like that. Let's see if this works and click submit and boom, we can see our first post and all of that is working into Heroku. Now, before we end this, let's actually go into Heroku and kind of show you guys what we're talking about in terms of this variable right here. So if I go into my Heroku account and search for that app, so here's the app. I'm going to click on it and I click on setting and I'm going to click wherever it said we will config. Now check this out, right? This is the environment variable that Heroku give us by default. And this is their database that they're looking out of the box. Again, remember this environment variable, we can set it to something different. So we can set this one to production or we can set this one to development. So let's see if that works. So if we set that one to development and you see if we set this one to development by default, this one Heroku has it evaluate to production. That's the value that Heroku has it. Now, the fact that we set this one to development, our application fails to load because it cannot get that route. It's not able to find these lines of code. But if we go back, I'm going to click on edit and set this one to production and click save. Now, again, you can remove this because Heroku already has that value set to production for you. But I just want to show you how this works. So if I go back here, refresh this and there you go. We're now able to see our application is working 
back and forth. And the last thing I want to show you is I want to also show you where that database is. So if I go into resources and here's the database that we attach whenever we're running that command. So let's say in the future, your application is growing, you want more user into it, you can kind of extend that from the free version. You can kind of modify the plan to be something different, like 4,000, maybe you're getting a lot of users or so on. So this is just an idea of things that you can do with this. All right, guys, in the next video, we're going to show you how we can actually, instead of using the Mongo DB Oroku M lab, we're going to actually show you how we can connect our application with the MongoDB Atlas. So see you guys in the next video.